Hey everybody, how is it going? It is your pal, Sal here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to our Whitney Houston discography journey. Today, we are checking out her second studio album, which much like her first album, is self-titled, except this one is just called, well it's not, just Whitney comes later in the game, but this one is just called Whitney. Uh, so she dropped the Houston for this one, so she's Whitney in this album. Uh, again, it is her second studio album. It was released on June 2nd of 1987, about two years after the first album, and guess what? Hit number one on the Billboard 200. Uh, there were a total of six singles for this album. Uh, the first four, I'm just gonna let you know right here, all went to number one. Uh, I Wanna Dance With Somebody Who Loves Me, Didn't We Almost Have It All, So Emotional, and Where Do Broken Hearts Go? All songs, I do know. The final two singles, Love Will Save The Day, hit number nine and the sixth and final single I know him so well hit number 14 on the Dutch top 40 so with this album like I said there are four songs going into it I know I do believe that there are ten total right ten songs no, 11. Fancy. 11 songs, so 4 out of 11 I do know, so that's a little less little less even than the last album. Also in terms of the last album, because I like to give updates when I can. Um, fun fact, uh, Take Good Care of My Heart is a song that has massively grown on me. As if I didn't... I, it was probably my least favorite on the album, and I still don't know if it fits quite well on the album, but... It's very groovy, and I do enjoy listening to it, as well as um, Someone For Me. I know I said it was very juvenile for Whitney, but... I can't lie. It grew on me. It grew on me with that little 12 inch dance remix I put in my workout playlist. So, regardless, I still love the debut album and I'm excited to tackle the second album. This album is very beloved. Uh, it's probably one of the most common ones I saw when I asked, what's your favorite Whitney album? It's the middle three, or the middle, what, four? Four that are usually the most loved. Um, so I, I, I can't I can't wait. We're gonna begin right now with track number one. Let me put this aside. Uh, it needs no introduction, as many of these songs won't. But uh, this is I Want to Dance with Somebody Who Loves Me. Let's just let's do it. Okay, here we go. Made out the sun. Still enough time to figure out how to chase my blues away. Oh, I wanna dance with somebody. I wanna be in the with somebody. Yeah, I wanna dance with somebody. With somebody who loves me. I'm been in love and lost in my senses. Let's spin a little. Whoa, okay. That's always so hard to do with the like, space I have. <laughs> we spun around. Don't we all? We all need a man who will take the chance. <laughs> Ah. Dance. So, with this song, I mean, what do you truly say? It's more than just, because I feel like you would find this song a lot in, you know, it's on the radio a lot, and it, probably in an 80s playlist, but I feel like this song is so much more than that. I feel like it's truly one of the greatest pop songs ever written, um, sung by one of the greatest, vo one of the greatest voices who ever lived. Uh, it's... 
It's amazing. I mean, there's nothing more that can be said about it. It's iconic. It's groundbreaking. It's it's everything. Whatever this song is, it's everything. Um, so what I think is most important for me is to share a little memory I have with it. Uh, coincidentally, on the day I'm filming this, a year ago, or no, two years ago, I saw a Whitney Houston tribute concert done by Belinda Davis. Uh, me and my mom went to see it and it was fantastic and I remember loving this when this song played. Um, but a few years ago, I saw the tour, the national tour of The Bodyguard the Musical, iconic, starring Deborah Cox, and I remember the night we saw it, it was the anniversary of Whitney's death, and during the finale, they sing this song. And I don't know if Deborah did this every night, but she specifically said during the middle of the song, uh, we love you, Whitney. And I just remember thinking, oh, because it was, it, was it was literally the anniversary of the day she passed away, and I remember I was like, I felt like she was there. I really did. Um, so, yeah, this song is iconic. I love hearing it. I mean, what, I mean, there's nothing I, a, simple, a simple man like me could say about this. Um, but it is amazing. Who doesn't love it every time it comes on? It's perfect. Track number two, our first song, I Do Not Know, Just the Lonely Talking Again. So let's hear it. Okay. It's confusing me. Okay. I'm afraid to say let's make up. Okay. And all's forgiven. Tell me. No, maybe. Are you real and red and for love? Or is it just the lonely talking again? Okay. I get what she's going for. Are you really ready for love, or are you just lonely and you're doing the lonely talk again, trying to get me to come back? Uh uh, she ain't falling for that. I love how she's saying everything on here. Lots of talking. This almost feels like a monologue set to song. I love it. Oh, don't let it come back, Whitney. Uh. Tell me, are you real and red and wonderful? Or is it just the lonely talking again? She really needs to know. Are you ready? No, you ready? No, 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 no. <laughs> so that was just the lonely talking again. And what I find interesting, as I said this a little earlier, is that this sounds like it's a monologue sent to music. It's it's literally, I felt like Whitney was talking to me. And she was like, hey, listen, if if you're if this is just you. BSing with lonely talk because you're lonely and you want me back, then don't even bother. But then there was a point in the song where she was kind of like, but if it isn't, then I guess, you know, I'm open to it. Uh, this was lovely. I mean, just her voice, the way it built up ever so slightly towards the end, but didn't go too far. It just felt just right. Uh, that was a gorgeous track. Um, again, I really felt like Whitney was talking to me. Now, I do agree with it being, so I don't see this as a single. I feel like it's a s amazing over and beyond album track. Um, but it's, it is pretty good. And who was, so this is the first song in here that has one writing credit and that goes to Sam Dees. So Sam, you slayed the scene writing this. Um, 
That was beautiful. I loved it. Track number three, which was the, what was it, the fifth and final single, or no, the fifth and, fifth and second to last single, uh, this is Love Will Save the Day. Okay, we're going up beat. Okay. It can. It really can. I like the high vocal there. Here's my advice, okay? The day, okay. When your world falling apart, all you have to do is say a prayer and love will save the, the day. day. There's an answer in your heart, so let your light shine on, my dear, and love will save the, the day. day. Okay. Love will save the day. Love will save the day. Well, there's a question that we need a new direction, because we all could have used some peace and harmony. Wow. You go. But you need a little change of heart. Change of heart. I get the fear and frustration. And you've got trouble on your mind. Love will we'll save, save the day. day. Okay. When you're feeling full of doubt. And fear has got you in a bind. Love will we'll save, save the day. day. When you're all falling apart. All you have to do is say a prayer. And love will we'll save, save the day. This is, this is a little bizarre. The day. I like that. No, 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 Love will save the day. Love will save the day. You better believe here. Go, Whitney. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was Love Will Save the Day, and my biggest uh, takeaway I got from this is when I was looking at Wikipedia and looking at, you know, the writers and producers, the producer of this is Jelly Bean, which I was like, oh, instantly I know who that is. Uh, so he's done a lot of work for Madonna's early albums. According to some of his credits here, he has a few other Whitney songs. Um, so, when I heard this, I was like, okay, this is very 80s. I don't think it's aged as well as they maybe would have liked it to versus I Want to Dance with Somebody. But what gets me with this one is that Whitney sounds great on it, and I think she's having a lot of fun with it. It doesn't sound... It doesn't sound like a Whitney Houston song. It's really interesting to me right now because I'm doing music video reactions for every every day of the week. Uh, they haven't gone live yet. They will towards the end of February. Um, but I'm going through and watching all of Kylie Minogue's music videos and right now I'm doing the videos from the PWL era so I'm still on her first album, Kylie. Uh, and it, it, this sounds to me like it could be a song on one of Kylie's early albums. It has that very distinct 80s 80s fluff sound. So I don't think it quite works as well for, I mean, Whitney sounds great. So that's not the issue here. I did like the song at the end of the day and I think maybe I would have enjoyed it from, well, it's hard to say because Whitney is such a great vocalist, but it doesn't, this one doesn't feel quite like her. But then there's also the case of that, like, well, I didn't really like someone for me because I thought that that was a little too juvenile for Whitney. So there is the possibility that in the future, this is one that's gonna grow greatly on me. But right now I'm like, I like it. I just don't think it's Whitney. But Whitney can do whatever she wants, but you know what I mean? Like, it, the dance track for Whitney has to be just right. And this one didn't feel, I felt like it could have been a Kylie Minogue song. I think that's what gets me. It feels maybe a little Madonna, but it doesn't feel as well written for Madonna. So, it felt very Kylie Minogue, early Kylie Minogue to me. So, what do you think? Let me know. 
Okay, track number four again needs no introduction. This is Didn't We Almost Have It All? Let's just do it. Didn't we almost have it? Once again, we can take the night into tomorrow. I thought it was forever. I don't know these lyrics as well as I thought I did. <laughs> oh, wait. I know this part. I do know this part. I don't know. That way again. What I like about Didn't We Almost Have It All is that it's it's very reflective of a relationship and it reminds me a lot of All At Once. But whereas All At Once makes you want to cry, break down, and all that good stuff because it's right in the moment. Uh, whereas this one is too, but I find it very different. The production could have you think it's it's a sad it's a sad song no matter which way you slice it but it feels almost a little more content than all at once it's not like my world is ending uh, she's looking back at the relationship and she's like the you know what I, we almost had it all the ride was you with worth the was worth the fall living you makes life worth living uh, she's stronger because of this relationship she went into it it didn't end exactly maybe the way him or her wanted to but there was something nice about it, something that will be remembered, something that will always be part of her. Uh, that's what I think I like about the song is that, it, again, it, it makes you think it's very sad, but it's it's okay at the end of the day, you know what I mean? Um, it's such a beautiful piece. What I find interesting, though, reading some of the reviews here for when it came out, I mean, some of these people, I just they just seem to hate singers. He, where, where was it? Um, wait, where, where, where was this where I saw it? I'll, I'll save my champagne for pop singers who don't add overblown song to their repertoire. Um, it's, it's interesting. It's like some of them are like, like it, but they'll also like gives like really like rude comments also in like half of it. I don't get it, but regardless, whatever. Um, it's a great song. It doesn't make, maybe it makes people more sad than it makes me, but um, it's, it's lovely. Track number five, we have another big hit. So emotional, which I haven't heard this one in a while. I don't know why I like it. I just do. I just do. Oh! Heartbeat, hear in your heartbeat inside of me. No, 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 no. 
Okay, that was so emotional, and I should make a slight confession. Out of the big four singles from this album, this one technically might be my least favorite. Now, let me explain real quick. I do want to explain this. So my introduction to this song was through the, the Bodyguard musical, you know, the iconic <laughs> musical that opened in London and then toured America. So in the cast recording, which is how I first got into it uh, with Alexandria Burke, there is a medley. Uh, it takes place in the story when Whitney's character, it was Rachel Marin, um, is at the... the Mayan club or whatever, and she does a little medley. So in this medley, it includes Million, million Dollar Bill, my, one of my favorite all-time Whitney Houston songs, I Want to Dance with Somebody, and So Emotional. So, So Emotional in that version, it sounds a, a little different than I would argue the album version does, and that was my introduction to the song. So it's only like a little snippet of it, and it's exactly what I love about it. Um, when it comes to this full song, I know it's iconic, and I know it's amazing, and I'm not saying anything bad about it, I think it's a great song. It's just personally not one of my favorites of Whitney's. Um, I love the chorus, the verses don't do as much for me personally. I like that she's having fun like, I don't know what it is. I just do. That's fun. Um, and get me straight. This is not me saying anything bad about this track. It's just not one of my personal favorites. Um, but it is iconic in its own right. And I, listening to it, I did enjoy it. Now I do enjoy it. It's just not one I ever seek out, if you know what I mean. Track number six, Where You Are. Okay, we're getting back to a ballad. Okay. This is kind of giving me Hold Me vibes, so I, I could be into this. It's all your face across the screen. Is he dead? Did he, was he what? Okay. And as I pour my coffee, hmm. I picked up a magazine. Oh, that's a lovely vocal. That's gorgeous. That's gorgeous, Whitney. Again, this feels like a monologue sent to song. <laughs> this is interesting to think about. So if you, we look at the track listing, this is only our second song on the album that's an album track. And I do think compared to just the Lonely Talking again, that so far is winning the best album track battle. Um, this one I do find interesting because basically it's Whitney being a little sad. She sees her ex-man in the magazine and she's like, oh, I should be where you are with you together. Now my question is, is that this song leaves a lot open to interpretation. It's like when she's looking at the TV in the magazine, what is she reading about him? Is he famous? Is he dead? Should she be with him with his fame up together in the heights of the fame sphere? Or is he dead? And she's sad and she's like, I should be with him. I really should be with him. I'm that sad. I should be with him. Um, there are lots of other ways you could determine it. Is he a politician? Is he, is he a scientist? What is he? Who knows? Um, but it leaves a lot of that up and you can interpret it how you want to. So I did like it for that. Um, but without interpreting it, I did find it a little, you know, not paint by the numbers, but I think just in comparison to just the lonely talking again, it doesn't fall, it doesn't reach quite the heights, but I still did like it. I thought it was nice. Track number seven is the title I'm most excited to hear. Uh, this is called Love is a Contact Sport. So let's see it. Oh my God, I can't wait. Okay. Already this sounds exactly how I thought it would. 
We gotta move in time if you wanna do me right, no. interesting to me about Love as a Context Board is that I actually really like this and I think out of the album tracks this might well I would argue okay I could argue I could argue that um Just the Lonely Talking Again is a better song but I actually thoroughly enjoyed Love as a Context Board so first of all I feel like this is the most sexually explicit <laughs> if we could say that Whitney has so far gotten in her music I mean Love as a Context Board you gotta move in time, you gotta do it right. Here I am, love is a contact sport. Um, you gotta act untamed if you wanna play the game. So grab my hand, slam. <laughs> I mean, how funny is that? I like that it has like a little swing to it. But what also that this song reminds me of, it feels very musical theater to me. Like I feel like this takes place sometime in the middle of act one in a show and the guy has to prove his love to the girl and there's like a big dance number. So grab my hand, slam. I could just see a dance break happening with this. Has, I wonder if she's ever done this live. Cause I feel like it'd be a fun like little song in the middle of the show. I'd be like, oh hey, this is love. Love is a context sport. Um, there's a part of me that wants this to be a single, but I feel like it's a little too silly to be a single, but I also love it. So I'm, I'm torn. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. I feel like it sums up the cover. Whitney looks like she's having fun. So I'm like, okay. Um, I liked this. I had a lot of fun with this. That was adorable. Track number eight, You're Still My Man. That sounds a little sad. Or maybe a little epic, I don't know. I'm, I haven't decided, wait. This almost sounds like all at once. Okay. On oh. the day that you left me, you said you me. had no regrets. There's a bond between us. us. That has She's getting that diction out there. Yet. You're still my man. Mm -hmm. Nothing can change it. We still This sounds this kind of sounds like all at once and didn't we almost have it all at the same time. That's a little weird. You're still my man. Nothing can change it. I love Oh, this has one of the same writers as Didn't We Almost Have It All, Michael Masser. Michael, no, you're basically doing the same song. Okay.
Okay, that was You're Still My Man. And one thing we should get out of the way, Whitney, as always, sounds fabulous, especially towards the end when she's ripping it up beautiful. Now my issue with this is that this sounds like a cheap knockoff to me of Didn't We Almost Have It All and a little bit at the beginning of All at Once, which is funny because the two songs remind me of each other from the get-go. But um, first of all, okay, so it is a similar, it is one of the same co-writers, Michael Masser. Uh, Michael, Michael, come on, you knew what you were doing here. These two songs sound exactly the same. Um, and that's what gets me, and especially vocal, and lyrically, they're not that different either. On the day you left me, you said you had no regrets. There's a bond between us that ain't been broken yet, and the feelings between us will never disappear. How can you be far away when your spirits are here? Didn't we almost have it all? Is basically the same thing, reflecting, saying, hey, this relationship, you know, didn't work out, but there was, I'll still love you forever, like, loving you made life worth living. Mm. Whitney sounds great, and you know, if, you know, didn't we almost have it all wasn't a thing, maybe I'd like this more, but in terms of the similarity, I'm like, they could have cut this. This could have been a B-side to me. I mean, Whitney does sound fantastic, but it's borderline the same song. Um, so no, I don't agree <laughs> with this choice. Track number nine, For the Love of You. Now that's the same sound, that's, that's from I Wanna Dance With Somebody, that sound. Okay, now we're transitioning differently. Okay, that was For the Love of You, and I have to say, you know, at first I wasn't feeling this one, so I don't like lyrically that I'm living for the love of you, there should be other reasons why you're living. But the song itself and its production really won me over, the way it felt so chill, it felt like I was on an island breeze, you know, just, just drifting around, you know, living for the, maybe the love of yourself, if you will. It reminded me very much of Janet Jackson's This Body That Loves You, now granted that song came afterwards, but it, it kind of had that swift flow to it, and I felt like I was ebbing back and flow, and I was like, you know what? This is gorgeous. Whitney sounds good. Um, it's pretty. It's very pretty, and I did like it. Track number 10, the iconic hit, Where Do Broken Hearts Go, which out of the ballads on this album I think is my favorite, so here we go. Where do they go? Let's find out. That cold November day We hate we November. Love that's waiting there And if somebody loves 
What can we say about this amazing, amazing piece? Whitney sounds gorgeous. The song is absolutely beautiful. One thing I learned before filming this video when I was just looking at the production credits for all of this, Frank Wildhorn is one of the writers on this song. I never knew that. If you're a musical theater person like me, Frank Wildhorn has written some of the most underrated musicals of all time, from it being Jekyll and Hyde, which is funny because then there's a Deborah Cox, um, what is overlay, because she did Jekyll and Hyde years later. Um, he wrote Wonderland, Bonnie and Clyde, so many others that I'm missing. He is just fantastic and so underrated. Uh, and to think, to think he wrote this with a guy named Chuck Jackson. My heart. I did not know that. I really, this is a, just such a great song. And it amazes me that it was only the four, it was the fourth single. I would have been like, this is number two, baby, after I want to dance with somebody, because I do like it more than didn't we almost have it all. Um... I love this song. It's so gorgeous. Whitney just sounds beautiful. Another great memory I have, it's the same night I saw the Bodyguard musical. Towards the end of Act 1, there's a bunch of girls at karaoke, because, like, Rachel and the, the Bodyguard go to, like, a karaoke bar to get away from everybody, which is where he sings, I will always love you, and then uh, she sings, I have nothing. But when they walk in to transition the scene, there's a bunch of, like, drunk girls singing this song, and I'll never forget my friend Lily, like, tapped me on, no, she was sitting on the side of me, tapped me on the shoulder. At, no, what, what side was she sitting on? I don't remember. But she tapped me on the shoulder. No, she's on the side, I remember now. And, um, um, she was like, oh my god, I know this song! Because she knew some Whitney Houston songs, not all, obviously. But she was like, I know this one! Um, so yeah, lovely song. One of my, This is probably easily one of my favorite Whitney songs. It's gorgeous. Um, where do broken hearts go? Back, you know, you, we know. We know, it's so good. Okay, track number 11, I Know Him So Well, which is a duet with Whitney's mom, Sissy Houston. Now, funnily enough, this is a musical theater song. It was written by Tim Rice, Benny Anderson, and Bjorn Uveas, or Bjorn, I forget how you say his last name exactly. But um, they, uh, the two members of ABBA, iconic writers of Chess. This is from Chess the Musical. It is from Chess the Musical, right? I'm not crazy. Let me double check that. Yes, it's from Chess. And it's been covered a lot by a lot of people. Um, uh, Chess is a musical that I'm not as familiar with, so I, I know the title of this song, but I don't know how it goes. So let's hear it. Yeah, let's hear it. They simply must. This part sounds familiar. Just lovely. 
Okay, the one thing that I want to just talk about is that it's really interesting to hear this song as a mother and daughter dynamic. I'm not sure if in the musical chess that's how it works too, but it's interesting Whitney saying, nothing so good it lasts eternally, perfect situations must go wrong, but yet this has never prevented me from wanting far too much for far too long. And then when Sissy comes in, where, where's her verse? No one in this in your life is with you constantly. No one is completely on your side. And through I move my world to be with him, still the gap between us is too wide. I find this interesting because, you know, as we know, Whitney's passed away and her mom is still alive. And it's really weird in 2022 hearing these verses and knowing how in life, you know, it's that that's could ha that happened. Um, wasn't it good? Wasn't it fine? It is madness that he can't be my moon. In the end, he needs more than before. He needs his fantasy and freedom. I know him so well. Um, what this was reminding me of in a weird way, because I had to look at this in my in my brain and go online and look at something real quick. I do remember in watching the Whitney documentary from 2018, I learned about the lesbian relationship she had with Robin Crawford. And in my memory, I thought it was her, her mom that was trying to separate her away from her because she didn't like the fact that Whitney might be gay. Um, turns out in what I'm reading now, it seems that that wasn't the case and that Whitney ended the affair and for fears of others reactions but I'm like whose others reactions are you spe speaking of so um the world I would guess but you know also maybe her parents I'm not sure but there is um if you take out the thing especially at the end when they say it took understand it took some time to understand him oh I know him so well they could be talking about each other in a weird sense it, it feels very there's a lot you, you could read into this with them two singing it um, but it was pretty. Their voices sound absolutely lovely together. I love Sissy's lower tone from Whitney's. I think it just so it sounds like a mother and daughter singing together, and I love that. Okay, guys, we just finished listening to Whitney's second studio album, Whitney. And uh, I have to say, I do think in terms of content and the way the album flows, I do think it's a little better and it has a more cohesiveness to it. Whereas with the first album, you know, you did gather, it was like, this is a bunch of great songs, you know, released as an album. I feel like all of these released together kind of feel right. Uh, now in terms of the, let me see, we have six singles out of 11 songs. So more than half of the songs were singles. I think that they made all the right choices for sure. Um, I mean, the first four, I mean, iconic, amazing, what can you say? Number five, tra or, tra or single number five, Love Will Save the Day. Um, Again, that's the one that to me sounded like a Kylie Minogue song. So I find it a little odd and it did hit number nine. So it was a top 10 hit. So, I mean, thank God for that. But it did feel a little odd to me. And then the sixth single, I Know Him So Well, uh, which was only in, which only hit number 14 in the Dutch top 40. Um, yeah, that's a pretty song too. I feel like it's more of an album track. It, it feels like, I guess out of all of these of which I could maybe release as a single, I guess this one makes sense. Um, but I mean, it's up to you how you want to take it. Because they really went with... Fun song, ballad. Fun song, ballad. Fun song, ballad. So, I mean, they, they had, they had, they knew what they were going for. So in terms of the other tracks um, that we have here, I think the best album track, my, my computer is frozen again, so I can't even scroll up to see what the first song was called. Um, oh my God, you've got to be kidding me. Um, just the Lonely Talking again. I think that that was the best album track. That was probably my favorite. I like that it sounds like a monologue set to music. I think that that was a lot of fun. Um... Where You Are, which is the second album track, is interesting to me in the sense that um, you kind of can leave it up to interpretation, like where is this guy, where should they, where she be with him, who knows. Love is a Contact Sport is easily, to me, I think the most surprising album track. I would love for it to be a single, I just don't see how well it could have done. It's a very, it's a little bit of an oddity, but I like it. I like it a lot. You're Still the Man, again, just sounds like where do, or um, did, what is it, yeah, didn't we almost have it all and all at once? That one could have been cut, in my opinion. Um, then we have For the Love of You, which, again, is very uh, beachy, beachy vibes for me. So I did enjoy that one. So all in all, I actually really enjoyed this one. Out of 11 tracks, only one I didn't like, and that was You're Still My Man. So I feel very content with this piece. I think it's a, there's a great, I think it just elevates everything slightly from the first album. I think we get slightly more mature ballads, more mature writing, um... But again, the writing in the first album is so mature too, more mature too, so how can you be mad? It's hard. They, they complement each other actually really well, these first two albums. So what do you guys think of Whitney? Let me know in the comments below. As always, do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram at Salvador J. Rosa, Twitter at Sal Says Stuff, and TikTok at Salvador J. One. And I'll see you guys tomorrow when we tackle I'm Your Baby Tonight. Have a great day. Uh, thank you all. What I, I usually end in a pun, so I hope your broken heart won't go too far because I'll see you tomorrow. So have a great day. Bye.